Hey, lady in the black hat. <sighs> it's, what tasty beverages do we have in that Yeti? It's so hot. Milk was a bad choice. There's got to be a better way to stay cool. What is up, friends? I am Todd. Behind that camera is Colleen. And with any luck, this beautiful white beast of a machine sitting next to me is going in our van today. This is a Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioner unit. Coolier, coolier, I believe they pronounce it. What's cool about this particular unit is it plugs directly into the house battery system. That's right, folks, it runs off 12 volt DC and it's pretty efficient too. This baby pumps out 7,000 BTUs. Okay, okay, 6,824 if you want to get technical, but it only draws 19 amps on eco mode and only 54 at full power. Now, if you're literally camping in over 100 degree heat every single day, this might not be the right fit for you. You might want to look at something from nomadic cooling or even upgrading your inverter to run one of the larger 120 volt air conditioner units. Fortunately for us, we live in a pretty mild climate and we don't camp in hot weather too often super hot weather that is. So this is the perfect option for our build. So let's go ahead and put it on the roof. Hopefully we'll learn a few tips and tricks along the way. Let's get to it. In order to pull this off, we're going to need a few things besides the AC unit. 3M90 spray adhesive, 3M window weld, a caulking gun, some scotch bright I prefer the maroon type, lint-free rags, isopropyl alcohol, wide painter's tape, RTV silicone sealant, a plastic drop cloth, some knee pads, and something to cut with. Our tool of choice is the air saw. Now the last thing that I think you need personally to make this a successful install is the DIY van adapter kit. The Dometic actually comes with this cardboard template. It's actually quite large, probably 19 and some change across by 14 high. The DIY adapter kit can reduce this quite significantly because instead of cutting out a hole for the entire thing, they cut out for the ventilation area, they notch for the power cord, and then they actually drill through holes for the mounting bolts. The other cool thing I like about this kit is that it's CNC machined to fit the features on the roof, so you can actually choose where you want this installed and the team over there will machine these features in so that it only sits in one place. You can't mess that up. And then finally, the last feature that I like is that you can buy a spacer to lift it up off the roof because the actual vent system sits down in the van quite a ways. And so by adding this spacer, you don't lose any of that roof height um, in the van. And they also have a custom seal uh, made of their mini cell foam that goes on top there. And so this system with these three pieces, I think is just a way better way of installing this and getting your cut location correct. Now the beauty of the CNC adapter is it literally just falls right into place. You cannot mess this up even if you tried. And then once it's set, you simply just trace the inside of the box. It's as easy as that. I also took this opportunity to mark the hole locations. This is another great feature of the adapter. So before we start cutting, I did something very similar to the window install video where I made this little plastic hammock to catch all the metal shavings. And remember, inside holes are our big ones. 
So I did drill these M8 clearance holes to 1130 seconds. If I were to do this over again, I would probably choose something closer to 3 8 just to have a little bit more clearance when bolting everything together. I drilled the smaller holes to a quarter inch. I'm probably actually not going to end up using these. These are for the trim ring, which I'll probably bolt directly to my ceiling panel, but I figured I'd put them in anyways. This is a deburring tool. I'm just going to go around and clean up any sharp edges. I also did this same thing from the inside of the van as well. All right, now that I get the holes drilled, I'm going to go ahead and tape around the cutout line here just to protect the paint a little bit. And then we'll actually slice it with the air saw. We're going to use the same saw that we used for the windows because it just worked really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this. Safety first, says the guy on the roof of a van with a pneumatically operated saw. Again, this thing throws a ton of flex, so you wanna make sure you have proper eye protection, and it's pretty loud, so ear protection too. The more I use the air saw to cut these panels, the more I love it and think it's just the perfect tool for the job. My favorite thing is that it doesn't translate as much vibration to the panel you're cutting. If you watch somebody do this operation with a jigsaw, it looks like it's just being bombarded by the tool and they're having to add tape after every single cut to keep things together. It's right about here when I started to realize that using thin plastic for roof cutouts is not the move. This was something I had left over from the window project um, and I figured I would just use it and in hindsight it's so obvious that it wouldn't work. But that's the thing about these projects, and that's why I think these videos are so helpful, because we can learn from each other's mistakes and hopefully just get better as we do this more and more. Oh, hi guys. We got a hole in the roof. I got a little bit of cleanup left. We still gotta cut the notch. I'm gonna tape a piece of cardboard or a cardboard box under here instead and we're going to resume, finish this up and get the adapter on. After I cut out the notch, I cleaned everything up with a bastard file, sorry mom, that's actually what it's called, and made sure there were no sharp edges. All right, we got everything filed. All the edges are knocked down. There's no more sharp stuff. There was a little bit, cut myself there. Um, be very careful, this stuff gets pretty sharp. Now we're gonna clean around the area with some isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free rag. So we got all the metal edges clean, all the burrs are gone. We're gonna do the same thing we did in the window video where we use this automotive primer. We're gonna spray it in this cup until it develops a pool and then use this cheap foam brush to go around all the exposed metal edges. This will prevent rust from developing in the future. The cheap foam brush works phenomenal for the edges, but it's not so great for the holes. I think in the future I would try to find a narrower brush or maybe like a pipe cleaner or something like that, just to limit the amount of overpainting that's done here. So I got the trim ring here, and then I've got this tape line around the outside. It's about a quarter inch of the way, all of the way around. I'm going to apply some window weld, squeeze this down, and then make a fillet around with my finger here. Um, I ran out of gloves in my size, so I'm using Colleen's. Um, and I'm going to try to do this quick because I am losing circulation in my hand. So let's get it done. I've cut this into kind of a V here so that I can get a nice fat bead. And then I kind of worked my way around the adapter with the window weld, making two concentric rings that were of pretty decent width. I also added some extra window weld down into the machine pockets as well. Actually, I almost forgot one step here, and that's to rough up this a bit. No need to get too aggro on this part. You really just want to dull the surface of the paint. And I'm going to clean this one more time with isopropyl. And now we'll install the trim ring. And then I'm going to go around the outside and build a little fillet here.
Okay guys and gals, we've got the trim ring glued to the roof of the van here. I built up that fillet and then I wiped it with my finger. And almost immediately after, I pulled up the tape. And you can see it leaves a really clean line here. The urethane doesn't stick to itself at all, which is really nice. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then pick this project back up in the morning. Alright, it is the next morning as you can see by the rising sun. We have the adapter glued to the roof here and we're going to put on the one inch spacer and the half inch mini foam. We chose the one inch spacer because if you recall the vent on the AC unit is pretty deep. If I take a ruler and place it across the ceiling struts and measure down from the top of the stack, it's about 4.25 inches. Add another half inch for our ceiling panels, that equals 4.75, which leaves us only about a half inch of headspace loss. All right, I got the one inch spacer and the half inch mini cell foam here. I'm gonna be bonding these two together with this uh, 3M90 spray adhesive. You basically spray both bonding surfaces of each component, and then you use the super scientific knuckle method. If your knuckle starts to stick, it's tacky enough for them to be bonded together and you'll just apply even pressure and uh, complete the bond. Alright, I got these two pieces bonded together. That was actually the hardest part of the project so far. About halfway through, I realized my error where I should have took the more rigid spacer and applied it to the foam. Uh, the foam is just way too floppy and it makes it really difficult to kind of line up the edges as you're trying to come down. And as soon as these two pieces touch together, they basically bond instantly. So in the future, I would recommend taking the spacer and applying it to the foam. It just uh, worked out a lot better. We are back on the roof with the window weld. We are going to attach the one inch spacer and the gasket uh, directly to the adapter here. I'm doing the exact same thing I did before where I make two substantial concentric rings of window weld around this spacer. And then I added the spacer to the adapter by applying firm and even pressure around the perimeter. You do have to check the alignment every now and then because as you're pressing down the parts do tend to slide on one another. So just make sure that you're cognizant of that. I did end up using some clamps and wooden blocks to further press the parts together. This actually didn't work that well because the compliance and the nature of the closed cell foam. It takes a lot longer for this type of foam to return to its original shape. If I were to do this again, I would probably bond the adapter to the spacer and then figure out some alternative way to bond the mini cell foam to that stack. I really didn't want to spray adhesive around or on top of the van, which is why I chose to do it this way. Here I'm waiting for the window weld to dry. I did put a finger fillet, I guess it's more like a finger wipe, on the gap between the spacer and the adapter. This is just to make sure it was fully sealed. While the roof dries, I'm taking the opportunity to install these brass threaded nuts. There's two different sizes. There's an M6 thread and then there's an M8 thread. The M8s actually go in the holes marked six and the M6s go in the holes marked seven. Oddly enough, the M8 actually requires a standard quarter inch hex driver to drive that in, whereas the M6 takes a five millimeter. It might fit a standard, but five millimeter seemed to be the best fit. Um, so you basically take this, push it in the hole, you apply a little bit of pressure to get it started. It does take a little bit. And then once it's grabbed on, Tighten them in like so. And that's that. There's four of each size, so I'm just going to go around and finish that up. Okay, this baby is up on the roof. Colleen was holding the ladder down there. She probably should have been helping instead, but we just went for it. I would recommend two people next time. Um, it was actually really hard to put this up by myself. I almost just fell again right there. Um, don't try this at home. Uh, we're going to put this in the hole and then we'll probably do the brackets tomorrow. We're tired 
and it's been a long day. Say hi to the camera, Gizmo Milkshake. Oh, looks like a dog is coming. We got it all dropped in the hole. It is looking great. I'll show you a shot from the inside to show you uh, how far the spacer and the adapter pushes up the van system. Here you can see with the one inch spacer what this looks like from the inside of the van. I think it will be really nice. It's basically about an inch and a quarter below the roof struts here. Okay, so I've got the air conditioner lifted up off the mini cell foam. I've just used some aluminum blocks that I've wrapped in paper towels just to get it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see either, but I also have the bolts in so that the alignment stays when it's in this lifted up position and it just drops straight down. I'm using this clear RTV and I'll basically go and apply that around, all the way around, and then bolt it down to the required specifications. All right, not sure if you can see the beam in there, but we got that all spread out around the whole perimeter, and we're gonna go ahead and drop this AC down. All right, we're inside the van here. We're gonna pull out our original bolts. Um, these were the shorter ones, and we're gonna install our new bolts. I ended up with 110 fully threaded. I'll put the link in the description below. These are perfect for a 144 with my countersunk brackets, the adapter, and the one inch spacer, and the mini cell foam on top. We're gonna go ahead and pull these out. We're gonna put the brackets up. We're gonna tighten everything down. Uh, we'll let the adhesive dry, and then we'll do a final tighten to spec to lock everything into place. So let's get to it. So if these brackets look a little bit different than the ones that came in your box, that's because they are. I custom fab these so that the bolts and bar would be above the sprinter roof struts. I'll be doing another video on how I made these, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. Alright folks, that concludes our AC install video. We're going to be covering the power hookups in an upcoming electrical video series, so if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to stick around. Also, if you enjoyed any of the content in this video, please give us a thumbs up. It helps, and on the way down, slap that subscribe button. And if you have any questions on any of the content we covered, feel free to drop a comment in the comments section below. We'll see you next time, and stay cool.